What's up guys, Ian here, and I'm really excited to show you guys something that I've been working on here in my home shop for the past five or six months now. I have learned to do zinc plating on my own parts at home. I tried to find shops that would plate some of the parts off of my car. Nobody out there is willing to do that unless you're doing a hundred thousand parts in a you know commercial application. So I had all kinds of little parts that I wanted to plate to go on. There it is, my 67 Nova. Parts that you know that you, you couldn't necessarily powder coat because if you did you would ruin the way that they operate. A good example of that are these little threaded windows adjusters right here that hold your window tracks in place you don't want that thing rusting inside the door and it was rusted when I started and of course if you powder coated it you would just completely destroy the ability to use those threads so that's where you want to take certain parts and zinc plate them and I've now learned enough about this process to where I feel like I have enough confidence in what I'm doing to share with you guys how I am zinc plating my parts I know it's working because I've left this part outside my shop sitting out in the rain for two months and it's not rusted so I finally got the ability to where I can start plating some of my parts at home to my 67 Nova. And the purpose of this video is to show you guys what I have learned. Now, with that said, I want to go ahead and get a disclaimer out there that... I have watched a lot of videos and done a lot of reading online about how to do this and how to do it right, and it seems everywhere you go, you find a different method and a different opinion, and so I have absolutely no doubt that somebody who watches this that really knows what they're doing in zinc plating for a living is going to be able to pick holes all in this video, so just know in advance that I am a home amateur hobbyist plater. Uh, everything that I'm about to show you, you know, may not necessarily be correct, but it definitely works. And since it definitely works and it's not hard to do, I'm going to show you how to do it. If you want to follow along, click subscribe. I post videos like this from the shop all the time. All right, so the first thing that you've got to do is build your electrolyte solution. This is pretty easy. I've got uh, a five-gallon bucket here. I bought like uh, five or six of these five-gallon buckets with lids online. I'll put a link down below in the description where I got all of those and found a good price on them on Amazon. So I start off with three gallons of distilled water, and then I add to it one gallon of distilled white vinegar. From there, I mix in about 11 to 1,200 grams of Epsom salt. It's worth mentioning that I read online that you're supposed to use Epsom salt and not regular salt because supposedly regular salt will create chlorine gas in this process. I don't know if that's true or not, but you know, just in case it is, I use Epsom salt. Okay, so here's the part that I'm going to go ahead and plate today. It's a uh, trunk uh, latch assembly part, and you can see it's got some surfaced rust on there. Uh, I'll point out several things about this. This is the part where we now have to uh, clean our part down to absolute bare metal, and there's several ways that you can achieve this, as well as several things that you need to know about doing this. First, you'll notice that I have chosen not to hang my part like this with my copper wire, but instead I have threaded a bolt into the part and I have attached my copper wire to the bolt. You'll also notice right there, can you see how it's wound around very, very tightly? I like that copper to be a good tight connection as best I can to the part. I found that a loose connection will get you exactly the kind of results that you would expect. Uh, so anyways, I'm using a copper wire here. I, I will tell you, you know, I have used aluminum wire and aluminum wire works just the same. However, I prefer to use copper because when you drop that down into the bath and you start plating it, you will see the copper change color. It's harder to see the color change on the part because you've got a silver part and you're putting, z you know, silver zinc on top of it. So that's why I like to use copper wire. Now, it's worth mentioning that the reason that I'm, I've am i attached my copper wire to this bolt that goes into the part, and I'm not doing this, is because it's very common that if you were to take that copper wire and hook onto this right here, where the wire touched the part, it wouldn't want to plate. You would have, you know, a little spot there and a little spot there where it was touching, and as a result, no zinc ever got onto it. It would start to rust at that one tiny little location and, of course, start to propagate. Now, there's ways to get around that halfway through the plating process. You can jiggle the part a little bit and just move the wire to a different spot, you know, just by jiggling it. And so there's ways to get around that. But at the end of the day, this is a really good way to do it. So I've got my part here. 
The first thing I've got to do is clean this down to bare metal. And before I sandblast it, which is what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go over it and, you know, and I'm going to wipe off any sort of oil residue on this part. I'm using lacquer thinner, but you can use acetone. You know, there's all sorts of different things that you can use that are really good cleaners. Uh, but I'm using lacquer thinner right here. So I'm going to get to the best of my ability all of the oil off of the part. Then I'm going to put the part inside the media blaster and I'm going to media blast it. That's going to get it down to absolute bare metal. And when I pull this thing out of the media blaster, I'm not going to touch the part anymore. I'm only going to touch this part here. And of course, you'll notice that as I'm doing this, I'm even using gloves to keep the oil from my fingers off of that part. Any oil whatsoever on this thing will ultimately destroy your finish. Now, if you don't have a media blaster, there are several ways that you can do this. You can use a stainless steel, steel wire wheel, which sometimes I do use on some of my parts. Uh, you can also do a muriatic acid dip. Muriatic acid is also known as hydrochloric acid. You can buy the stuff by the gallon at Home Depot. If you do that, just make sure that you're wearing ample safety gear because that stuff is really nasty. It will dissolve concrete. It's, it's tough. Sometimes it makes sense to dip a part in muriatic acid and in fact I'll go ahead and do this one as well because it's hard to see but there's these little rolled edges right here you're never going to get inside that rolled edge with any sort of wire wheel or media blaster or anything but when I dip this into hydrochloric acid it's going to get literally up inside of the part in places where nothing else can get now I read online a lot of folks you know they they dilute their hydrochloric acid they'll run 20% acid and 80% you know just distilled water. I use just straight up 100% HCl when I do my dips. Uh, it's worth mentioning that when you get done dipping that part into the acid, uh, you also then need to go to a specific bucket that is nothing but distilled, uh, distilled water that is just for rinsing your hydrochloric acid off of the part. So I actually have two buckets for that muriatic acid dip. I've got my bucket of acid and then my bucket of rinse water. And so at the end of the day, when you finally get done and this thing is down to bare metal, you know, you've cleaned it, you've blasted it, you wire wheeled it, you've used acid, whatever you've chosen to do to get that part down to bare metal, then that's when she's good to go. You make sure that you only grab it, you know, by your little hanger at that point and it's ready to go into your bath. So now it's time to get our freshly cleaned part that I've got hanging from my light right there so I don't touch it. Now it's time to get that into our electrolyte solution. There's a couple things that you need to know again about this. Number one, you're going to want a small aquarium pump inside of that electrolyte solution to kind of keep the water churning. You're just going to drop a tiny little bitty, you know, uh, aquarium pump down in there. I recommend a 50 gallon per hour unit. I found that if you use anything bigger, it just really circulates the water really strong and it's not good i'll put a link down below in the description to where you can get those little bitty pumps they're all over amazon and ebay for you know 10 bucks to your door couple things I'll tell you about those pumps. I do recommend having yourself a spare ready in case that thing goes out while you're trying to plate. That electrolyte solution and the whole zinc plating process really likes to lock up the impellers and the little motors on those pumps. In fact, it's actually really common that I'll take my little dental pick and I'll stick it down inside the motor and use it to, uh, you know, turn the impeller and get the little pump going again. That'll make them last a little longer. Although it's worth mentioning that that's probably not the safest thing in the world, sticking a sharp metal object inside of a little Chinese electric pump. So if you do that, disclaimer, right off the bat, it's probably not safe. The second thing you're going to want in your electrolyte solution is a little aquarium heater. I like to bring mine up to about 90 to 100 degrees, so uh, make sure that if you're going to order one of those that it will get hot enough. I'll put a link down in the description to the one that I use, but those things again are all over eBay and Amazon. Not hard to find them to bring this stuff up to 90 to 100 degrees. Next up, you're going to want a piece of copper tube. You'll notice that I have ground little notches in the end of that tube so that it can sit on top of my five gallon bucket without rolling away. 
Now it's time to talk about our rectifier. I'm gonna put a link down below to my Vivor 30 amp rectifier that I bought, and I wanna caution you guys against buying a rectifier that is too small. There are lots of rectifiers online uh, that are really just meant for, for jewelry, you know, for plating, gold plating, really small stuff, and you are not going to do any decent sized car part whatsoever with a jewelry rectifier. So that's why I chose one that goes up to 30 amps. And let me explain to you how you know how many amps that you need. A general rule of thumb here is you're gonna want about 0.1 to 0.2 amps per square inch of part. So let's suppose that we were doing a three inch by three inch plate that was a tiny thickness, okay? So we got three by three on one side, that's nine inches. You got the other side, you double it, that's 18 inches. So I'm probably gonna start off with somewhere in the neighborhood of two amps and kind of, you know, adjust it up or down, you know, based on how it's going as I go through the plating process. So that's why I chose a 30 amp rectifier so that I could do somewhat of a decent size part. Um, it's worth mentioning that based on my experience of, you know, researching online, the voltage doesn't necessarily really matter that much. It's all about amps. So make sure you get yourself a rectifier that is big enough. Uh, and again, link below in the description to mine. So here we are at this point. We've got our solution right here. It's mixed up. We've got our, our vinegar, our water, our salt. It's agitated with our pump. It's heated with our aquarium heater. We've got our rectifier over here ready to do its job. We got a piece of uh, copper to hang our part from. Now it's time to talk about the anode. What you're basically going to want here is a sacrificial piece of zinc where you're gonna positively charge your anode and then you're going to negatively charge your part that you're trying to plant and then tiny little pieces of zinc are going to move from your anode and stick to uh, you know your cathode which is your negative uh, negatively charged actual part now I, I picked this up and I showed this to you this is a zinc anode that I got off of eBay I quit buying my anodes on eBay because I'm not really sure that they're pure zinc they turn black inside of the solution. I'm not sure what's up with that. I ended up discovering that it's way cheaper to get yourself a roll of roofing zinc flashing material. Again, link below in the description. I think it's like 30 bucks for a big roll of this stuff from Home Depot. And what I'll do is I'll cut up a couple of pieces of this, eight inch long, something like that. And then I'll put one anode over here and then one over here. So at the end of the day, I've got my part in the middle and then I've got my zinc on both sides of it. At that point, I'm going to take an alligator clip line that you see right here and connect the two that way when I charge one anode the other is charged as well and then at that point I'm going to take yep, there we go there we go there it is I'm going to take the the positive line from my rectifier and connect it to my piece of zinc anode and at that point I have positively charged uh, two pieces of zinc anode on both sides of my part Okay, so while we're on the topic of how many amps to use, like I said, you're going to start off at about 0.1 amps per square inch. But as you put your part down into your electrolyte solution, you're kind of going to want to look at it and gauge whether or not you need to turn the amperage up or down. And you can tell if the amperage needs to go up because you'll notice that you're not really getting a nice uniform coat of zinc on your part, as you can see in this photo here. And then also something that you might see is that it's not fully covering the part and the hard to reach nook and crannies like you see in this shot right here you can tell that no zinc got down into the threaded bolt areas uh, and as a result it later started to rust uh, I have a sneaking suspicion that that is the uh, Faraday cage effect that's causing it not to be able to to get the zinc into those tiny nooks and crannies uh, and it seems to be in, in my experience that you basically just kind of crank up the amperage a little more to overcome that in the case of plating now I will tell you that should you run off and crank it up too much, you'll know it. You'll know it when it looks like this. There'll be like a crystallite structure of zinc that starts building up on the part. And that lets you know you have got it up too high and it's got to come back down. Okay, here we are ready to plate. I have my positive wire connected to my sacrificial anode, my piece of zinc right there, and then another piece of zinc right over there. I have a line running that connects both of those two together. And then our piece of copper across the top that we're going to hang our part from is connected to our negative lead. 
Okay, now it's time to plate our part. I'm going to drop it down into our solution and we'll turn our rectifier on. We'll start off in this case with maybe two and a half amps or so. See how she does and immediately you should notice all sorts of bubbles coming off of your part. I'll also point out that I just added a vice grip here to clamp my copper wire to my copper bar. Just make sure it's a nice uh, tight fit and that the, uh, you know, the electricity flows with no problem. So check this out. In no time at all, you can already see that it's working. Uh, this has only been in there maybe two or three minutes. And have a look how the uh, color of the copper wire has changed. And all of a sudden, the part has a different sheen to it. Hope you can tell, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's absolutely plating. All right, it's been a couple minutes. Let me show you how I know I don't have enough amperage. Can you see the color change right there? You see what I mean, how it's plating around the outer edges, but it doesn't want to plate towards the middle? Uh, to me, I found that that generally means you don't have the amperage up high enough. So we'll come over here and we'll crank it up a little bit more, maybe between four and five and see what happens. So check it out, I've cranked up my amps to 10, which is definitely too high, and it's causing the plating to occur better. However, it's building up the crystal stuff on the edges even worse. Uh, so it's kind of like six one, half a dozen of another. Um, I think what I'm going to try out of curiosity is I'm going to rehang it from a different spot and just see what happens. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and shut off my rectifier and pull my part out. I did end up hanging it uh, from a different spot to see, you know, how it would do. And looking at it here, I can see that it built up a little too much zinc up here on my corners. Uh, got a little yellowing right around that hole right there. Previously, you know, the zinc was kind of going around that hole and it didn't really want to, uh, to plate it. Uh, so when I hung it from the different spot, that problem went away, but you can see that little bit of yellowing right there. That is thanks to me not doing a good enough job cleaning it, and I realize that right now, and that, you know, I didn't clean the bolt and clean the part and put them together. I put them together and then cleaned the part. So there was obviously a little bit of contamination that was in between the part and the bolt that did that. But, you know, the, the really unfortunate part of this is something is happening there that I don't fully understand. It's plating, but as it gets towards the center of the part, it doesn't want to continue plating. You know, and I, I started uh, raising the amperage, trying to get it to go further inward, and it would, in fact, start, you know, creeping inward and plating towards the middle. But as I started raising it, it started building up that crystal kind of, you know, zinc on the outer edges. So I'm not really sure what the deal is there. You know, you guys, by all means, you know, add that down below in the comments. Tell me what you think. It's worth to mention that a lot of folks will use some polish and then like a buffing wheel and bring something like this to a luster after they plate it. In my case, I'm not worried about doing that stuff. You know, I'm doing parts that nobody ever sees that all I'm trying to do is just keep them from rusting. But since I do want to try and show you guys a successful plating and this wasn't necessarily as much success as I would have liked to have seen I'm gonna take just a, a, a simple little three inch by four inch caster plate and uh, you know clean it up drop it back into the electrolyte and uh, hopefully I can show you something that works a little better wish me luck all right here we go take two got ourselves just a simple little caster mounting plate right there and I drop it into the electrolyte solution and we'll turn our rectifier on I'm going to go to about two and a half amps because three by four is 12. Double that is 24, so around two and a half amps. Hopefully, we'll plate it. We'll see what happens. All right, let's have a look here at our caster plate. It's been in there for about, oh, I would say a half an hour or so, something like that. So it's a little darker around the edges. I've seen that kind of stuff before. I'm not sure what it's called, but it is completely covered in zinc just for the heck of it i'm going to go ahead and dip it into some uh, yellow chromate and we'll see what that does as well okay gonna dip my part into my yellow chromate solution this is stuff that i purchased from the folks at caswell i'll put a link down below in the description to it as well and uh, basically it just adds a coating of yellow chromate to it gives it kind of a yellowish goldish kind of color 
and uh, you'll see here in just a second what I mean it doesn't take long for this stuff to to color it and there it is I've still got some of that build up out around the outer edges there because I've used too much uh, too much um, too much amperage well there you go guys my caster plate turned out better than the previous part but I don't necessarily really understand why I'm seeing a dark zinc finish around the outside a, a light zinc finish around the inside and then of course when I dip it into the yellow chromate you know the the yellow chromate kind of affects the uh, the, the lighter colored zinc you know much more so than it does the dark I, I really don't quite understand that I don't know why some parts you know tend to uh, to plate with a more uniform color versus what I just did here my opinion is honestly that my uh, my electrolyte solution is getting old and has been used too many times it's had too much zinc get dissolved into the solution that's a, a theory a hypothesis of mine I've no noticed that as that solution starts getting older and older and older I start having problems out of it and it doesn't plate as well as it does when it's brand new so I think before I run off and try and plate some more parts I'll probably go dump that stuff out thankfully I mean it's really just you know vinegar and water more or less uh, so hopefully I can get back to having a, a bit more um, uh, just a little bit better success with stuff like that now there is something I want to show you this is one of the pieces of my uh, sacrificial anode and if you have a look up here at the edges you can see how it's eaten into the side of it and it's just it's pulled it away and if if I'm holding it down here on this end which was out of the water this piece feels thicker than it uh, than it does out here so if you really if it'll if it'll focus that well you see exactly what I mean there how the zinc is just disappearing so it's interesting how that happens and this stuff you know just goes away as you're sitting there using it so anyways hopefully that's kind of an intro uh, into a uh, zinc plating and you know maybe I've shared enough with you guys that uh, those of you who want to attempt this yourself at home uh, you can and maybe have a head start as a result of what I've done here today I sure hope so um, like and subscribe if you find this stuff to be helpful information I hope so I'm doing my absolute best to generate the best content I can and yet at the same time you know be completely honest about it sometimes it's it's really tempting you know just to, to cheat on the side so I can show you something amazing and act like everything you know went totally fine when it really didn't uh, so what you saw here today is exactly what happened uh, wasn't perfect but I uh, did some 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 decent plating anyways and uh, I think I'll have a lot better uh, luck next time when I run off and change out my electric light with some new stuff so anyways hope you guys enjoyed it appreciate as always y'all taking the time to watch me here on YouTube you guys have a good one actually you know what I take that back I decided I just couldn't end the video like that so I went to Walmart I got some more vinegar and some Epsom salt and I made a new batch of electrolyte solution and proceeded to uh, to plate another one of those parts those parts have been sitting outside in the rain for about three or four weeks now and I want to show them to you before I do that I do want to mention that in that previous shot I mentioned of course that the zinc was disappearing it's obviously not just disappearing it's going on to the part that your plating is probably well as you know it's in the solution itself so uh, I first did a piece that was just uh, uh, sandblasted plenty of rust has formed on it over a few weeks you can see there um, <clears throat> that's you know kind of your uh, your starting point this is the piece that I did that you just saw we plated that it's not covered in rust in fact I really don't see any rust at all it has kind of that you know yellowed look to it from the yellow chromate and then the new piece is this one here which actually does look better it still experiences the problem there of uh, flip it around the other side you know how it, it seems to build up more zinc I guess out on the outer edges and I don't necessarily know why but uh, it looks pretty good and it's definitely not rusted at all so there's absolutely no doubt that I am in fact getting zinc onto those parts and successfully plating them I'll go ahead and show you since I've been in the process of welding the body onto my 67 Nova uh, we we looked at some parts uh, earlier in this video and you can see them 
right there. There's my plated parts inside of my quarter panel uh, that uh, my door latches will bolt to. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, <laughs> sorry for not exactly getting it right on the first time. And even then, it's really not a perfect process. Don't be surprised if I post another video, you know, where I show you some updates and some things I've figured out to improve the process. I sure hope so. I appreciate you guys watching. You guys have a great one. Take care.